We got our press passes revoked in Las Vegas, so I figured I'd film this intro here instead. Lincoln Financial Field, right beneath I-95. The Eagles might not be winning a Super Bowl this year, but there is somebody who is winning, me. The past few weeks, I've been using machine learning and data science to bet on the NFL, and I've been taking home quite a bit of money. Now, in the wake of the Super Bowl, it's time for me to share my process and my Super Bowl bets with you. Welcome to the latest installment of How to Beat Capitalism with Degenerate Sports Gambling. A couple months back, I bet on the World Series using data science and mathematical simulations, and I owe you guys an update on that one. We lost all our money. This just goes to show that if you put a lot of work into something and you really figured it out, you're still subject to random chance, and uh, that's what happened here. But this time's different because we're gonna be using machine learning, and that pretty much just solves all of your problems. The idea at the beginning of this project was to collect all of the NFL data for the past 25 years and then input it into a machine learning model and see if it can predict the outcome of football games with any sort of accuracy. This sounds great in practice and actually works quite well. However, we're gonna be fighting against the sports book and not the NFL in and of itself. Instead of just trying to predict who wins a football game, we're gonna to try to do it more accurately than the sports book and the entire sports betting market in general. And that's why it's key to understand how sports book odd making works before we even dive into this project. I'm gonna let someone with deep industry knowledge explain it to you. They call him the gambler. Honestly, this hat's just super tight and hurts my head. I'm going to be betting on two types of odds throughout the length of this experiment. One of them is money line odds, which is just trying to predict who wins the game, and the other is team over-unders, which is trying to predict the score of each team at the end of the game. Money line odds are probably the easiest wager to build a model for. It would just require predicting the likelihood of a team to win, and then calculating the likelihood that the sports book is giving us of that team winning, and then comparing the two and betting on the one that makes more sense. For example, if we have a game where the Packers are playing the Cowboys and the Packers have negative 200 odds, then that is a 66% chance to win. Where if the Cowboys had positive 230 odds, that's around a 30% chance to win. And you'll notice that those don't add up to 100% and there's about 3% missing. That's the casino's edge. The edge that makes gambling so hard to be good at. Right off the bat, we have to be 3% better than casinos with the power of billions of dollars and Ivy League math graduates geared specifically towards making me lose money. My only qualifications include a few college courses and 57th place in the county spelling bee in the fifth grade. And it was a small county. The reason I think that we can beat these casinos is because they're not necessarily trying to predict who wins the game. They're also running a market, much like the stock market. Odds on games throughout the day move up and down based on supply and demand. The casinos, like DraftKings, are not in the business of having the most precise odds throughout the day. They're also trying to make it a fun gambling experience and to keep people betting, and we can probably take advantage of that. Now that we understand how the sportsbook industry works in general, it's time to talk about how we're going to game it with neural networks. Neural networks work with inputs and outputs. Imagine we had a neural network to predict a football game, and the two inputs are how many touchdowns were scored in the past five games and how many yards were gained in the past five games, and then the output is the likelihood of that team to win the next game. Using the programming language Python and various NFL data libraries, I was able to download the past 25 years of play-by-play -play NFL data. I then combed over this data manually to see if I could make inferences to see what inputs I would want to put into my neural network. Were there correlations between how many touchdowns were scored over the past 10 games and the likelihood for them to win the next game? Was it obvious that if a team got sacked a lot over the past 10 games, then they would likely lose this game as well? Did a higher average body weight of linemen mean that your team was better? The answer to that one is no but to the rest of them, yes. I found that there was quite a few statistics that were pretty good predictors of who was gonna win a football game, such as how many points on average were scored over the past 17 games, how many QB passing yards there were, how many QB rushing yards there were, and how many QB touchdowns were scored as well. We have to balance off these offensive stats with defensive ones as well. So I took the opposing team and input that into the model as well. Statistics like sacks per game, rushing yards allowed per game, and passing yards allowed per game. Also, of course, points allowed. There's one more variable I added to this model that's actually extremely important. It's whether or not the team is home or away. It was at this point I realized that all of the offensive stats I input into the model are quarterback stats, and so I named it the Brady algorithm. Fitting. Now that we had the inputs to the neural network, I compiled a huge list of statistics and outcomes for the past four years of football games. I took those inputs and outputs and fed them into the neural network to teach it how to predict the outcome of football games. I then had the idea to pretty much duplicate this neural network and instead of predicting who wins the football game, predict the scores of each individual team. This would allow me to bet on more things like team over-unders. After teaching the models, I ran some test data and predictions through it, and there are about 
59 to 60 percent accurate, which is really good. But is it good enough to beat the sports book? Let's find out. All right, it's time to gamble. So we're starting in week 18, the last week of regular season games in the NFL, which isn't ideal. I put a clean $50 into my DraftKings account so it would be easy to see the gains and losses over time. My plan was to bet $2.50 on the game as a whole and then another $2.50 on each over under. But don't be alarmed, I will be blowing a lot more money than that on the Super Bowl, 100x in fact. The first game I bet on was Houston versus Indianapolis. This is before I built the raw win percentage model, and so I only have the scores to predict. I put the statistics consisting of the last 17 weeks of QB stats, as well as the defensive stats into the model, and this is what it predicted. The Texans were predicted to score 21 points, and the Colts were predicted to score 22. I added those two up, and it was obviously under 47.5, so I took the underside of that bet. I then bet on the Colts for the money line. I won the underside bet, but lost the money line bet, bringing my balance to 49.77. I didn't lose hope though, because this is only the first game, and it's going to take a lot of games for me to determine whether this algorithm works or not. These are all my bets for this day. There's a lot of them, so I'm not gonna go through each and every one. One key point here is that the sportsbook had Tennessee as the underdog, but my algorithm predicted that the Titans would beat the Jaguars 23 to 19, and so I bet on them to win. This netted me $7 on a $2.50 bet. I didn't bet on the over-under of that game though, because when I added the two scores up, they pretty much equaled what the sportsbook was saying. This is actually quite common throughout this experiment, which actually gives me quite a bit of confidence in my algorithm. I lost both of my bets on the Eagles game, but netted 635 off the Chiefs game. This brought my balance to 56.27, which is pretty sizable over the starting balance of $50. It equates to a 12.5% increase, which is actually better than the annual return of the S&P 500. I'd consider that a win, but it's too early to be sure about anything. The notable mentions today are that I won an underdog bet on the Titans, netting 560 on a 250 bet. I cashed out my other bet on that game prematurely, I don't remember why, but it happened. Regardless, this day brought our balance up to 5685, which is a small increase over the previous day. If I remember correctly, this is the day it snowed a whole bunch in Buffalo and they paid some fans to clear out the stadium. My algorithm doesn't take weather into account yet, that isn't really relevant, but I figured I'd throw it out there. Return for today was slightly negative. I dropped down to 55.59, which is about a 2% decrease. Not sizable, but something that we have to take into account. So this is the day I was most worried to talk about for obvious reasons. My algorithm predicted that the Eagles would lose even though DraftKings had them as a clear favorite to win. I ended up winning that bet. I'm sorry, Philly. That's my bad. Other than that, I won quite a few bets today, and that brought my balance to 6409, which is about 28% higher than when I started. We're, we're doing pretty good. I placed three bets on this Packers 49ers game and won two of them at pretty much even odds. This brought my balance to 6684, a 32% increase over where we started, and it kept the steady gains coming in. On January 21st, I bet on the Buccaneers-Lions game as well as the Chiefs-Bills game. Out of the five bets I placed, only two were winners, and that gave me a slight loss for the day. This brought the balance to 6451. At this point, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about my algorithm and am naively thinking that I actually have an advantage here. Sadly, at this point, there's so few games left in the season that I'm not going to be able to draw any more conclusions past this point. However, it's been a really good run. On January 28th, the Chiefs and the Ravens were the first game I bet on. I had the Chiefs to win, which indirectly meant that my algorithm predicted that Taylor Swift would be going to the Super Bowl. I took home $7 on that 250 bet because they were pretty big underdogs going into that game. I also won one of the over-unders, bringing the total for that game to 12-12 on 750 in bets. However, when it came to the Lions and 49ers, I only won the money line bet, which wasn't that great odds. It canceled out majority of the winnings from the Chiefs game. We still ended up making money on this day though, bringing our total balance to 64.86, which is about a 30% increase over the $50 we started with. I know this isn't like winning a 25 leg parlay where you make $1,000 on a dollar, but this is a pretty big margin considering I've done this consistently over a few weeks in a game that's supposed to be rigged towards the casino. Of course, I'm not naive enough to say that this is 100% a surefire trick to get rich, but I will tell you one thing. I'm going to be betting on the entire NFL season next year, and we're going to see how much money I can really make. Because if I can extrapolate these wins over the course of the NFL season, which I'm not entirely sure I can, there's a chance I could double my money every year, which pretty much beats every single investment vehicle out there with a sizable confidence. However, first things first, this season isn't quite over yet, and I know you're waiting for one more piece of information. Which brings us back here. It's now time to reveal who's going to win Super Bowl 58, or at least who my algorithm predicts is gonna win. The winner of this year's Super Bowl is the Kansas City Chiefs. My machine learning algorithm predicts that the Chiefs are gonna score 26 points, 
and the 49ers are gonna score 24 points. My bets are as follows. I have an over 23 and a half on the San Francisco 49ers for team total points, and over 24 and a half for the Kansas City Chiefs, and my money line bet is on the Kansas City Chiefs. Wish me luck. I really need that $250 back. All right, let's go.